Factor analysis is a statistical method used to reduce a large number of variables into a smaller number of what we call underlying factors. It is widely used in various fields such as psychology, education, sociology, and marketing. These fields have used factor analysis with the intended goal to try to identify a kind of underlying common structure or patterns of how people respond to a set of questions or, or a large set of items. It's a way of trying to understand the potentially complex relationships underlying a sometimes large number of variables and a smaller set that we can use to explain. Factor analysis really works by using what is the, the underlying covariances and the relationships among factors. And we try to develop a theory and a smaller set of variables to help explain that. So for example, if we have variables x1, x2, x3, x4, we can have all the way up to say like x100. We have many, many different types of variables. And what we try to do is reduce that large number of items, this large set, down to a smaller number of latent factors. That we might only have, say, factor one, factor two, and maybe only five factors in total that we can use to represent all 100 variables in a much more concise way without losing any inferential value from the whole set of number variables. And it allows us to then represent maybe individual's position on those 100 variables on only five variables. So it makes our job of making inferences much easier because we have a lot fewer pieces of information to use to help make decisions. One of the really major advantage is of factor analysis is that reduction of information into a more manageable number of variables. And this can be really useful when we want to uh, make prediction. For instance, it is pretty, it would be a lot harder to make inferences with prediction with 100 variables, all trying to predict one outcome where we have all these possible different regressions here where we have to not only estimate them, but we have to try to understand what those values represent. Whereas in factor analysis, if we can first take those 100 variables down to a more manageable number with our factors, It allows us a much simpler way of then explain using the regression from the factors to our outcome of interest. And being able to simplify from a complex regression with 100 variables down to one where we only have five, that greatly reduces our burden of making inferences. And there are many different flavors of factor analysis. So one of the, there are two, the two most common approaches are exploratory factor analysis. Factor, if I can, factor analysis. And confirmatory. Factor analysis. And the major difference between these two is that in exploratory factor analysis, what we do is we don't have an initial idea of how each of the variables relate to the underlying factors. And so we kind of allow each factor to freely grab information from each factor. Whereas in confirmatory factor analysis, we can make a lot of strict um, hypotheses and strict assumptions about the measurement model so that we can test hypotheses about how items then relate to those underlying factors or constructs as is similarly called so that we can then use them uh, in a way that we have that is defensible with the information available. 
And one of the uh, powerful parts of factor analysis is that neither fa exploratory factor analysis is not really all that exploratory in practice because we usually come into the analysis having some idea of how items group together. Whereas in confirmatory factor analysis, we usually go into it knowing that this is the model we want to set up, but then we always explore the potential reasons for misfit in our model. And so neither exploratory factor analysis isn't necessarily exploratory and confirmatory isn't always necessarily confirmatory because there's a pretty exploratory part. And so making the distinction between the two isn't necessarily always useful, but there are some uh, strong different uh, methods within each kind of perspective that can be very useful. And we can use them to make uh, inferences about the patterns of responses very uh, usefully. And so just to wrap it up, factor analysis is really a powerful way of trying to see how does a general factor help us explain the items that we have collected. And why do we see a relationship between x1 and x2? Well, it's because they're indirectly related to each other through a factor. So that's the power of factor analysis, is to be able to say that not only do we believe the responses of item one and item two related, but it's because of their relationship with the underlying factor uh, that we're trying to measure. And so that is really the power of factor analysis, to be able to take a large set of items and then use it to make an inference about a potentially small number of factors. Thank you.